Originally, we thought that there might not be enough expressions and synonyms to create an entire podcast on the words fat and thin. There's fat chance of that, we thought. However, other words for fat and thin are not thin on the ground. There are loads of them. In fact, fat chance and thin on the ground are just the thin end of the wedge. Welcome to Aprender Inglés with Reza and Craig. Hello and welcome, especially if you're a new listener to the podcast. My name's Craig. And my name's Reza. And together with more than 50 years of teaching between us, we're going to help you improve your English and take it up to the next level. How are you doing, mate? I'm fine, y tú? ¿Qué tal, gordito? <laughs> you better explain that. There are lots of non-Spanish-speaking listeners. Oh, I better explain that. Gordito is a Spanish word for meaning a little bit fat. And I've heard it a lot in recent years. In the last couple of years... I've noticed that many, many people, particularly young people, people younger than me, to be honest, young people have been saying it a lot to their friends. And it's irrelevant whether their friends are fat or thin. I've seen people say it to very, very thin people. So it's just another way of saying my friend. But it means slightly fat. Have you heard it? Hey, hola, gordito, ¿qué tal? Yes, I have, but I think you have to have a pretty close, a pretty good relationship with the person you're speaking to to call them sort of fat or fatty. Exactly. We'll, we'll explain that a bit more in detail later. We'll get into it. So we're going to look at some synonyms of fat to begin with. We'll look at synonyms for fat and thin, but we'll begin with fat. But before we look at these vocabulary items and expressions, a question for you, Reza. Do you think that fat in English is a neutral word or is it an insult? It depends entirely on the situation. It can be completely neutral or it can be slightly or even very offensive. In which situations? How would you know if it's offensive? Offensive. It's harder to know if, it, if it's offensive uh, as compared to scientific. Well, if someone you don't know very well, or particularly if it's someone you don't know at all, calls you fat, that is definitely offensive because there has to be a lot of trust. There has to be a long-standing relationship with someone for them to be able to call you without offense fat. So if you don't have that relationship with someone and they're calling you fat, they are insulting you. I think there's no doubt about it. Would you agree? Yeah, in general I would. And I think there's one word that perhaps is safer to use maybe, and that's the first word on our list, overweight, overweight, which means to have a body weight that's higher than what's considered healthy or normal for your height and build. And that, in other words, is the BMI, which is Body Mass Index. And if you go to the National Health Service, the NHS website, you can see different numbers and different BMIs, depending on how tall and what your weight is, it will give you a BMI and it ranges from underweight, which is very low, obviously, normal range, overweight, obese and morbidly obese. What do you understand by morbidly obese? Well, I'm not sure exactly what doctors mean by it because I'm not a doctor, but the general meaning of morbid is that it's going to cause death. So I presume when a doctor says you're morbidly obese, they mean that your body fat, the fact that you're overweight, is contributing to your death. You're going to die as a result of it. Or at least a disease, perhaps, that you're more susceptible, more open to getting a disease related to being overweight. Have you got an example sentence to put overweight in context? Here's a good one. Craig has been trying another diet. 
He's been overweight for years. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I'm not actually trying a diet. I've given up. <laughs> but I have been overweight for years. It's something I'm constantly uh, fighting and trying to deal with. But as I mentioned with the BMI index, the next step after or the next level after overweight is obese. O-B-E-S-E. -E. What does that mean, Reza? So it's a term which specifically denotes or indicates, if you prefer, a high degree of excess body fat. So overweight is you got excess body fat. But if you're obese, it's a high degree of excess body fat. And it's often associated with various health risks. So maybe you're not going to die immediately, but certainly you're going to have health problems if you're obese. And even more if you're morbidly obese. If you're morbidly obese, I understand that that means for sure it's going to kill you if you don't do something about it. Here's an example with obese. Obese individuals are more prone to developing heart disease and diabetes. Prone to means it tends to happen to you. If you're prone to something, it, it's normal or very common for you. So if you're, you're obese, there's more chance of you getting disease and above all, diabetes. I think that's, that's widely accepted, that if you're obese... Diabetes is, it's almost inevitable. You're not going to be able to avoid it. A more polite and less direct way to describe someone who is a bit overweight, a little overweight, is plump. P-L-U-M-P. -P. It's quite a nice word to say as well. Plump. Say it with me. Plump. A little plump or a bit. He's a bit plump. And we often modify these adjectives with expressions like a bit or a little or you could say on the plump side he's on the plump side he's a little bit plump yes here's an example to demonstrate what craig was saying that it can almost be a good thing to be called plump for example the baby's cheeks were so plump and adorable so you know that it's normal for babies to have quite a lot of fat on their cheeks. It's not normal for an adult, but it is for a, for a baby. So we find that plumpness, that would be the noun, very, very nice. In fact, adorable. When a baby's cheeks are plump, they're lovely. We like it. Yeah, we, we pinch them, don't we? we? We take our fingers and pinch their, their little plump cheeks, or we could say chubby cheeks. C-H-U-B-B-Y is another adjective you can use. Chubby is similar to plump and it's a it's quite a nice maybe let's say gentle way to describe someone with rounded and slightly overweight physique a bit chubby a little chubby can you think of an example what about this even though she was chubby as a child she grew up to be a confident and successful woman so as Craig says, chubby is similar to plump and therefore it is quite often associated with children or babies, but it can be associated with adults too. So quite often people admit that they were chubby babies or chubby kids, even though as an adult they're not. Our next word is a word that I'm, I might not use, although it is fairly common, isn't it? Portly, P-O-R-T-L-Y, portly, which refers to being stout, S-T-O-U-T. That's stout as in round in shape, not the drink Guinness stout. That's not the meaning here. <laughs> although if you drink a lot of Guinness, then you probably would look portly. And it's typically used to describe a person, especially an older person, a gentleman, who would be portly. And it seems to me quite a posh word. What do you think? Yes, it, it, it's posh. So it's, it's formal, it's posh, and it's a little bit old-fashioned. But that's exactly why people sometimes use it. Because if something sounds excessively posh, formal, and a little bit old-fashioned, then in modern times, it can seem funny. So you might say to someone you know well, oh, I have to say, uh, you're, you're looking a bit portly these days. So you've, you've made it a joke then by using this unusually formal and slightly old-fashioned word. There's less chance of offending the person you're talking about. Would you agree? 
Yeah, yeah, I would. And here's an example sentence for you to put that into context. The portly man entered the room with a warm smile on his face. And in my mind, he's probably carrying a glass of brandy in one hand and smoking a cigar. That's the image I have. Yes, I know I shouldn't, but I automatically associate the word portly with port. Me too, me too. <laughs> There's no connection. But the, if you're, drink, the, the alcohol. The alcohol, uh, vino da Porto, yeah, that, that uh, sweet red wine from Portugal, which I'm a big fan of, by, by the way. That's probably why I've been getting very portly in my, in my middle age. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's kind of like a typical thing that a portly gentleman would do is exactly that, drink port with a cigar. That's exactly what you expect a portly gentleman to do. You would. Too often. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A word that's definitely not posh and upper class is fatso. F-A-T-S-O. Fatso is quite a humorous derogatory term or word that you should only use with people you know well. And it's quite common among children, kids at school. They, hey, fatso, pass me... Ask me your Coca-Cola or something like this. Hey, Fatso, what, what did you do this weekend, Fatso? So it's used among kids very often or, again, amongst people who have a very, very good, solid relationship. Don't go into a shop and say, hey, Fatso, can I try this on? You don't want to say that in a clothes shop, do you, Reza? <laughs> you, you don't. You'll probably be thrown out, I would imagine. But if you're, if you're married, you, you might say Fatso in almost... An affectionate way. It can it can almost be a sign that you 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 really care for someone. Sounds crazy. Uh, but for example, imagine a woman talking to her husband. So clearly, that's a very close relationship. And she might say, "Hey, Fatso," she said to her husband, "Did you eat all my chocolates?" Did you what? Sorry. <laughs> Did you eat all my chocolates? Oh right, yeah. So um, she's she's angry that he's eaten all the chocolates, but you know they know each other very well. Or maybe maybe she's not really angry, but she's pretending to be. It's just fake. So in that case, it would be quite typical to call your your husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, or friend fatso, and they they probably wouldn't be offended in that context. No, I would probably if I heard that from my wife, which I may have done. <laughs> I'd probably think, well, yeah, maybe I should try another diet. <laughs> Let's take a quick break here because I know you listen to this podcast to take your English to the next level. But what about your speaking? Is your fluency improving? Are you happy with your speaking skills? My conversation course focuses on making you a more confident and more fluent English speaker. You'll join me and a small group of motivated students and we'll meet on Zoom and have topical discussions, role plays, debates and presentations that will expand your vocabulary and help you express yourself effectively in English. So be proactive and take the first step towards becoming a confident and fluent English speaker. Send me an email today to craig at englishpodcast.com and I'll send you details of the next online conversation course. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the podcast. <laughs> So those are some words connected to fat, some synonyms. Let's look at some expressions for fat that we can use. For example, to carry extra weight. If you say a person is carrying extra weight, that means that they're overweight or maybe even obese. So it's a euphemism we can use for somebody who has more kilos than they should. He's carrying or she's carrying extra weight these days. Yes, for me, doctors who are going to be as scientific as they possibly can, I suppose, the most common adjective they would use is overweight. 
that shouldn't offend you. They're just saying it as it is. <laughs> or a doctor might also say, well, sir or madam, I'm afraid you're carrying some extra weight. It's a sort of the, the expression that a doctor might, might use. So for me, overweight as an adjective and carrying extra weight as an expression are the two most common things you'd hear from a doctor because they're just factual and um, no intention to offend. And if you're offended, bad luck. They just said it as it is scientifically. Yeah. My doctor told me last week, it's not that you're overweight, Craig, it's that you're one meter too short. <laughs> <laughs> so your BMI was not quite right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just need to be about half a meter taller. An example with that expression, he's been carrying extra weight since he stopped playing sports regularly. Another nice expression to say that someone is fat is on the heavier side. It's a gentle way of saying that someone is, is overweight. You're not saying, oh, you're really heavy. No, no, no. You're just on the heavy or on the heavier side. <laughs> if there's some kind of boundary, some kind of frontier, some line down the middle, unfortunately, you're, you're a little bit on the wrong side, <laughs> so to speak. And here's an example. She admitted that she was on the heavier side but she was determined to adopt a healthier lifestyle. To adopt a healthier lifestyle. She was on the heavier side. Another one you'll hear quite often is well-built. Now, I'm sure you've heard that expression before, but in other contexts, for example, a building, obviously, can be well-built or badly built as well. Anything that is constructed can be well-built. But when it refers to a person, it's describing someone who is large and perhaps fat. I say perhaps because it's, it's kind of slightly ambiguous, this one. If you're well built, you're definitely large. You're not a small person. But, you know, if you're really tall, well, then it's not surprising that, that you're large and you've got quite a, quite a lot of body tissue. You, you could say that that person's well built, but they might not be that fat. So well-built is kind of not quite clear. It, it could be a way of saying you're overweight, or it could be a way of saying you're just big. Some people are big. <laughs> if, you, if you're tall, you're going to weigh more, right? W would you agree? Up to a point. But for me, the scale would go more towards being muscular and in shape. Somebody who works out. Yes, it could be used for somebody in a very polite way, who is overweight, but I tend to think of a well-built person, someone with a big frame, someone who has a big body and is also in shape and muscular with lots of muscles. Can you, can you think of an example? Maybe a shot putter. You don't normally see many fat shot putters in Olympics and athletics. The athletes that throw a shot put and they put it under their chin, it's a really heavy ball and they throw it. So you could say, for example, like most of the other shot putters in the competition, he was a well-built man. So yeah, I agree. It could be ambiguous, but I would go to the side more of being muscular in shape and big. Yeah, me too. I tend to think of big people, people who were just born big, as the type of people you're going to call well-built. There's another expression which is, I'm not sure if I like it. It's big boned. Big boned. Now, everybody has bones in their body, but if somebody is overweight, maybe a little on the heavy side, you could call them big boned. But I don't like it because they don't have big bones. And if they did have big bones, you wouldn't see the bones. It's not the bones that's making them look overweight. It's the excess fat on their body. So big boned means larger than the average size, but I don't really like it as a way of describing somebody who's overweight. What do you think? Yeah, I would say that it's kind of used as an excuse almost for somebody that's overweight. It's a, it's a way of explaining away their overweight um, <laughs> condition. So for example, imagine one mother said to another mother, Oh, I, I, I see your, your kids putting on a lot of weight. He, he's pretty fat these days. And the mother be, who always thinks <laughs> her kids are the best. He's, he's not, not fat. fat. 
he's just big boned. Yeah. It's a, it's the sort of thing you'll hear, which is virtually an admission, but not quite. It's like, no, 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 he's not fat. He's just big boned. In other words, yes, he does appear big, but he's not fat. Yeah, that's a typical defense, isn't it, for people who are overweight? So let's go now from speaking about being overweight to the opposite end of the spectrum, and that is the word thin. Let's look at some synonyms for thin. But what does thin mean to you, Reza? Is that the same as fat, but the opposite? Is that neutral? Does that have a negative connotation? It definitely has a negative connotation, yes, but it's the best one to use if you want to be as neutral as possible and scientific or clinical. So you might hear that from a doctor, for example. I think that's the one a doctor would probably use. So just like a doctor prefers the word overweight, if you're a bit fat, they're not going to say you're fat. A doctor would say, you're a bit overweight, Mr. Mr. Wieland or Mr. Shah. Uh, and if it's the other way, they'll say, mm, I'm afraid to say you're looking a bit thin, Craig, or you're looking a bit thin, Reza. I think so in, so in your opinion, word. underweight, which is the opposite of overweight, is not necessarily more neutral or more neutral than thin i think it's it's another good one yeah it's equivalent to thin i think yeah it's equivalent yeah to okay thin. or is it hold on let me think no it's interesting isn't it because yes. in my in my opinion underweight is more neutral than thin i would expect a doctor to say listen i think you have to change your diet eat more protein maybe eat more times during the day because you are a little underweight. Do you know what? You're right. I'd like to, I'd like to change my opinion and think that, yeah, I think that what Craig says is actually more technically specific. The direct opposite of overweight is underweight. Yeah, obviously, yeah, over, under. Although you could use thin and get away with it, but perhaps thin is more to do with appearance than actual weight. For example, you could be thin, but not underweight. It's true. You could be thin, but not actually underweight. It, particularly if you're a tall person. Tall people quite often look thin, but medically, they might not be underweight. They just look thin because they've got long arms and legs and they're tall and they give the appearance of being thin. But medically, they may not be underweight. So yeah, you're quite right, I think. And also, it seems to me that with thin, in a similar way to fat, it can be neutral, but also because of society's way of imposing positive and negative images on people, thin can have a negative connotation. And we often modify it by saying a bit or a little. Yeah, the next door neighbor, the girl, she's she's a bit thin or she's a little thin. It's kind of a negative implication in the word sometimes. Yeah, I think that's quite right, yeah. Although one word that I think is quite positive, that's slim, S-L-I-M. And that refers to a person who has a very slender and graceful appearance. Slender is a nice way of describing someone who is nicely thin <laughs> and very delicate. Can you think of some examples? What about this? She had a slim figure that allowed her to wear all kinds of fashionable outfits. So particularly if you're, if you're a gentleman who wants to compliment the lady on her appearance, if she's definitely not overweight, not fat, then best to say that she's slim, not thin, because that could imply that she doesn't look good because she needs to eat a bit more. Yeah. Slim is the word to go it's for. It's interesting, isn't it, how we look at words and how we feel about them. And with slender, here's an example. She's got an attractive slender figure and she glides effortlessly across the dance floor. And with slender, I tend to imagine the person to be quite tall. I don't know if I'd use slender if the person was especially short. What do you think? Yes, that's right. It, uh, I agree with you. It has the effort of kind of um, having it all, being tall and being slim. Tall and slender you often yeah. hear as a collocation. Yeah, slender figure. 
And I really like your example about gliding across the floor because, yes, I think of slender people as people who can move elegantly very easily. With grace, yeah, absolutely. A word that you can use to describe a slim body and also meat and steak that doesn't have any fat on it is lean, L-E-A-N. So a little body fat and well-defined muscles, well-defined. So a lean person has a very well-defined figure. Can you think of an, uh, of an example? The athlete's training regimen kept him lean and agile on the field. So an athlete definitely wants to be lean, well-defined muscles, no extra fat, all good muscle. So another word for small is slight, and you can have a slight figure in the same way that you can have a slight increase in something, a small increase. So if you think of the word slight as small, it's someone who's thin or slender in a very delicate or subtle way. So it implies a small and slight build rather than a heavy build. Can you think of an example? Yeah, we could say that the ballet dancer, because I tend to think of ballet dancers as being slim and with a slight build. So the ballet dancer had a slight figure, allowing her to move gracefully on stage. Slight figure. Now the next one is a less common one, but it's very nice. Willowy. I'll spell it. W-I-L-L-O-W-Y. Willowy. And it means a mixture of things, tall and slender and graceful, with a certain elegance and flexibility, like the slender and swaying branches of a willow tree. That's maybe where it comes from. So a willow tree is a tree which has slender branches and they sway gracefully, attractively in the wind. Can you think of an example, Craig? Yes, how about this one? She was a willowy model who effortlessly glided down the runway. That's not the runway at the airport. That's the runway in a fashion show, the catwalk. So glided down the catwalk, the runway in a fashion show. Lots of um, people with slim figures gliding effort effortlessly in these examples and walking around gracefully. The next word, unlike willowy, is a very common word. You'll hear it a lot. But I'm afraid it's not positive. That is the word skinny. S-K-I-N-N-Y. It's a, it's a casual term for someone who's thin or very thin, perhaps. But it, it can sometimes carry negative connotation. You, you've got to be careful with that. I wouldn't use that word with someone unless you know them well. Here's an example. Even though she ate a lot, she remained skinny and couldn't seem to gain weight. So skinny, it comes from the word skin, the idea that the body is all skin. There doesn't seem to be much meat under the skin. You're skinny. Have you heard of the expression skinny milk? Do you have that in Northern Ireland, skinny milk? Yes, yeah. I don't like it myself, but uh, it seems to be ever more popular. What is skinny milk? Skinny milk is milk which has had the fat taken out of it. Like like a skinny person who seems to have no fat. Yeah. So, so skinny milk. Like um, skinny jeans. They're as close to your skin as possible. Do you ever wear skinny jeans? I haven't worn skinny jeans for about 30 years, but when I was younger <laughs> and I had a, a slightly leaner figure, then yeah, I used to wear skinny jeans back in the 1980s. As we said before, the opposite of overweight is underweight, underweight, and that means you have a body weight index, a BMI, below the normal or healthy range. And on the chart I looked at this National Health Service website, I saw that if you're underweight, you have a low BMI, body mass index, of between 14 and 20. Now, obviously, the number depends on your height, how tall you are, but 14 and 20 would give you an underweight score 
on the BMI index. Can you think of an example with underweight? The doctor expressed concern about her being underweight and advised her to gain a few kilos. So I think that's a good example of what Craig was explaining earlier, that underweight's a nice neutral scientific word there. Reza mentioned skinny before as being a negative word to describe someone who's underweight. Another word that you could use, although it is not as common as skinny, is scrawny. Scrawny. S-C-R-A-W-N-Y. You can see all of these words listed on the website in the show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 479. So scrawny. So scrawny means thin, but in an unattractive way. So it doesn't look very good because you can see the bones under the skin. So the bones are very prominent. Can you give us an example? Yes. After three months at sea with virtually no supplies, the pirates all looked scrawny and ill. Another word which is very similar to scrawny is bony. Not surprisingly, it comes from the word bone. So bony is B-O-N-Y. And that means that you're so thin that the bones under the skin are easily visible. A bit like scrawny, but perhaps even worse. Here's an example. Victor is very tall and imposing. But when he's undressed, he actually looks really bony. So there are some words we can use to describe thin in different ways. Let's look now at some expressions for thin. Now, we mentioned being bony. You can be skin and bones, or sometimes you hear all skin and bones, which is used to describe someone who is extremely thin to the point where you can see the bones through their skin. So you could say, for example, after weeks of illness, he became nothing but skin and bones. Another expression you'll hear a lot is, surprisingly perhaps if you've never heard it before, painfully thin. It means the same as extremely thin, but very often we collocate the adverb painfully before thin. For example, I lost so much weight when I was traveling in Asia, that I came back looking painfully thin. In the UK, in the autumn, or if you speak American English, during the fall, the leaves fall down from the trees and they go on the grass and there's leaves everywhere on the floor and you need a tool to clean up the leaves. That tool that people use is called a rake, R A. K-E, and it's a very thin piece of wood, a stick, with some metal on the end, like a comb. So the expression as thin as a rake means incredibly thin, very, very thin. He's as thin as a rake, or she's as thin as a rake, refers to that tool that people use in the garden to collect their leaves. Can you think of an example? Yes. What about this? After a year on her diet of only salad and water. Nancy was as thin as a rick. So she was extremely thin. Let's move on to look at some idioms now. And we mentioned some of these in the introduction to this podcast. Thin on the ground, we said. So if something is thin, Thin on the ground, it means that something is scarce or not abundant. There isn't a lot of it. And we often use this to refer to people or resources. For example, volunteers were thin on the ground for the charity event. So we had to work with a very small team. There weren't many volunteers. They were thin on the ground. Another very common idiom is through thick and thin. It's difficult to say because you've got th three times through thick and thin. (laughs) Not easy. And it means during both good and bad times. For example, though they had lots of ups and downs in their relationship, Alice and Sam stayed together 
through thick and thin. And we've been podcasting since 2014 through thick and thin, haven't we? There was the COVID pandemic. There were problems we had in our personal lives. But we kept podcasting. Doesn't matter what happened. We kept podcasting through thick and thin. Another expression, another idiom is skating on thin ice, which you can probably guess the meaning of literally. The ice is very thin. You know, skating on it, not really a good idea because maybe you fall through the ice into the very, very cold water. But if you're doing something maybe dangerous with a high risk, it's very risky, it could go wrong, then you can say you're skating on thin ice. For example, stop asking Janet questions about her clothes. You know she's very sensitive about her image. You're skating on thin ice. You might offend her. She might get angry. Another one with thin is this. Spread yourself too thin. When I say too here, that's T-O-O, meaning excessively. So you try to do too wide a variety of things at the same time. For example, don't you think working as an actor, producer, director, stuntman, and composer of soundtracks is spreading yourself too thin? Too many things at the same time. You won't be able to concentrate on any of them properly. I know what that feels like. The next one we also mentioned in the introduction, the thin end of the wedge. The thin end of the wedge. And this idiom means that you're referring to a small or maybe insignificant change or action that could result in or lead to more significant and undesirable consequences over time. So a wedge is something that's shaped like a triangle, but it's in three dimensions. For example, if you have a door that keeps closing by itself, you can wedge something underneath it. The shape of the thing you put under the door is a wedge shape. Or my favorite wedge, which keeps me fat, are potato wedges. Oh, so they're pieces of potato cut in a wedge shape. Yeah. So it's one of the reasons why I'm so fat. <laughs> if you if you play over overweight measure, not fat. Oh, sorry, overweight. Yes, that's <laughs> much better. Carrying a bit of weight. Chubby. Um, where was I? Oh, and in golf as well. You, I think there's a wedge that you can use if you're in a bunker. If you're in the sand, you use a wedge. The shape of the of the end of the golf club is a wedge shape. So the thin end of the wedge. For example. Allowing employees to work longer hours without proper compensation may be just the thin end of the wedge in terms of workers' rights. So it's the start of something negatively big. Here's an expression with the word fat, the idiom chew the fat. So you, you can literally chew fat. If you've got a bit of meat in your mouth with fat in it, you would be literally chewing fat. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the idiom, the metaphorical use of it. And it's to talk in an informal, friendly, relaxed way. Here's an example in a sentence. Let's get out of the office at lunchtime, relax, and maybe chew the fat together for a bit. So we're going to chew the fat. We're going to talk in a relaxed way, not in this stressful office. One thing my dad often said to me was, you're a fat lot of use, which is a colloquial way of saying that you're not at all useful. You are useless. There is no use for you. Another example, a fat lot of use. My mobile phone is now with no battery and no charger. So obviously, if you have no battery in your phone, it's of no use whatsoever, except maybe to wedge the door open. So a fat lot of use, my mobile is now. There's no battery and no charger. Here's another one with fat, fat chance. So this idiom expresses skepticism or a lack of belief that, that something will really happen. For example, he asked his boss for a raise, that's more money, but with the company's financial troubles, he knows there's, there's a fat chance of getting one. 
So he asked for it, but but he knows it's probably not going to happen. Fat chance. Reza, do you think there will ever be peace in the world in every country? Fat chance, Craig, I'm yeah. afraid to say, being a realist. I agree with you. So Reza, do you have sympathy for people who are overweight, for fat people like me? Uh, do, do I have sympathy for myself? As or, do you, <laughs> yes, <I> do. <laughs> <laughs> or do you think there's no excuse for being overweight? Is it simply a matter of self-control? No, that clearly the science is very, very clear that some people genetically are going to be overweight more easily than others. Yes, they need to and can adapt their diets and should adapt their diets, but it's just a simple scientific fact that some people eating exactly the same as others will be fatter. So it's their metabolism, it's the rate their body is, is burning the calories. Yeah. Exactly. So it is partly genetic and partly a question of diet, I think. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've heard that. I mean, I can only speak for myself, really, because I am overweight and it might be my metabolism. Although if I say that, that really is, I think, an excuse because it's I'm the person who puts food in my mouth. Nobody else puts food in for me and I need to do more exercise. So I can only speak for myself in saying that uh, I don't have enough self-control. But obviously, everybody is different. Every body's body <laughs> everybody's body is different and yeah it depends so now it's your turn to practice your english if you are a little overweight are there some words that we've spoken about that you strongly dislike in english for referring to fat or thin people maybe you're underweight which words offend you and which words do you feel comfortable with if any We'd love to hear from you. So send us a voice message. You can do that by going to speakpipe.com. That's S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com slash English podcast. What about emails, Reza? If you'd prefer to write to us, you could send an email to either craig at englishpodcast.com or belfastreza at gmail.com. And before we say goodbye, we'd like to remind you that this podcast is sponsored in part by MansionInglaise.com. Why not visit the online store and see if you can see a paid course that can help you with your English? Go to store, S-T-O-R-E dot dot net. Thanks as ever to all of you who are helping us by supporting the podcast on the Patreon scheme. If you're interested in joining the scheme for as little as $1.50 per month. Have a look at the link we've got in the show notes, patreon.com slash English podcast. And as a thank you to people who sponsor us, we give them instant access to audio transcriptions of the podcast. So go ahead. Why not give us a nice, juicy, fat donation? <laughs> a chubby one. And we don't have time, unfortunately, to thank you individually for your support, but we will say hello and thank you to our latest contributors. And they are friend of the show and longtime student in my conversation courses, Christina Rato. Thank you, Christina. And Tarabeo has also joined the Patreon program. What's next week, Reza? Next week, we're talking about compound adjectives. So join us next week for some grammar. Thank you for listening this week. If you enjoyed this podcast, please tell your friends so that more people can listen. And until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's bye-bye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. <laughs> <laughs>